Welcome everyone to Stadium Journeys of Destructive Views, a show where a couple of guys in a couple of countries have a couple of beers, more, and discuss the stadium somewhere in the world and their experiences there. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And we're excited to be here with you again tonight. Before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to the Stadium Journey YouTube channel, like this video, like the other videos, leave a comment, like, share, follow, right? That's how it works on social media. And uh, check out stadiumjourney.com for all of our fantastic content. So let's get going. Dave, what are you drinking tonight? So uh, because we're in Philadelphia, I decided to get a beer from Scotland because I don't know. There was no other segue into Scotland that I could think of. <laughs> so anyway, I have a Caribbean rum cask from Innis and Gun, and it is has hints of rum, vanilla, and rich fruit. So it's a, it's a, uh, you know, a porter, stout kind of thing. Definitely heavy. But I, actually, I can taste a little. The vanilla is what kind of puts it over, you know. It, it, it kind of gives that a little bit of sweetness to that, uh, that really kind of heavy, that heavy beer feel. So I know it's totally not yours. It's not like the right color. I mean, look at how dark that bad boy is mm, chewy, <laughs> chewy. <laughs> <laughs> all right what do you got <laughs> well you know with those ingredients i bet it smells really good yeah all right so for me uh after my division one football announcing debut I, after reading like the sponsors thing over and over and over throughout the game i was like i had to go check out this damn brewery so i did i went uh right up the street from stonehill university yes stonehill is division one school <laughs> 2,400 students, football wow. stadium seats, 3,000. So you could fit the whole student body in the in the football stadium. And it ain't a big football stadium. But anyway, I digress. Um, I went up to Shoveltown Brewery in eastern Massachusetts. And uh, they had so many good beers that day on their menu that I got a flight. So I could try a little bit of everything. Then I got another flight. <laughs> tried four other ones. I had to get home, I needed a flight. <laughs> Then I didn't get yeah I would I then I then I just got a pint of the one I liked the best which was this summer ale come on like get out of the way it, very very fancy name summer ale shovel town summer ale and uh, we're at the tail end of summer but still hey I still like me a good wheat beer so that's what I had if we were visiting today's destination we might be drinking a man full of mocha American porter we're on the porter theme today I should have had a porter too I guess huh. From Dock Street Brewing in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, because today we're talking about Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, home of the Philadelphia Phillies. Before we get started, let's take a look at the stadium vitals. Okay, uh, Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia Phillies. For my money, a really nice ballpark. But if you ask a lot of, of veteran Major League ballpark travelers, I don't think you'll hear it up at the top of a lot of people's best of lists. Why is that, Dave? Well, it it definitely doesn't fit into the, uh, the Wrigley and Fenway group that quite a few people have at the top of their list. It doesn't have the, the view and the location that like pnc park does it doesn't have the history or san that, fran yeah uh, yeah it doesn't yeah same with uh with san francisco absolutely it doesn't have the history and influence that baltimore does uh and and i look i i'm with you citizens bank park sneaky good it, it wasn't high on my list and we just went this past summer, and I, I, I found myself, you know, wow, wow, wow. And then I started questioning, well, when was the last time I was here? And was this here? And was this here? And was this here? And I couldn't remember. So I'm not really sure if it's had a whole bunch of renovations and changes. But there's a, you know, there's a little something for everybody there. Yeah. Could one of its strengths also be one of its weaknesses you mentioned neighborhood and you didn't want me to bring this up but i'm gonna anyway because <laughs> it's part of the south philadelphia stadium complex where in philly they've got baseball football basketball hockey all the arenas in one spot 
So, like you said, it doesn't have Wrigleyville surrounding it. It doesn't have the great views. It's in South Philly, surrounded by parking lots. Now, it's got a view way off in the distance. If you look past the outfield fence, you can see downtown Philadelphia. Yep. If you're in the upper deck, way, you, you got a, way. <laughs> a decent view <laughs> in that sense. Sure. So, I mean, so having all the things in one place, it's a plus. But it's also a minus because there's... Uh, yeah, it's not like you can go hit the bar right after the game. Nothing's really close. There are a couple. Well, you places can. There are a couple, but you know, for the most part, you're I not. I wouldn't walk. I wouldn't walk to them. Yeah, no, yeah, I yeah. Even the walking part. I mean, you're gonna walk across a lot of parking lot to get there, uh, and you. So you've got that Xfinity Live, which is there, and I'm not sure what it's like, kind of day to day. Uh, you do have the casino, which is kind of way at the other end of the parking lot. Um, there is a Chickies and Pete's just on the outside and a few blocks away. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not huge on Chickies and Pete's like it's, it's good. It's fine. Uh, the crab fries, I don't totally freak out about like everybody else does. I, I like them. I like them. They just cause they're different. Be cause they're different. way too salty. Uh, but you know, like there's some stuff now I'm not a neighborhood guy. I want to get in. I want to get out. I, by the time the game's done, I'm ready for the hotel and, and sleep. Right. Whereas you, you like to. Yeah, you old man. Yeah, I know. You like to hit the bar and, you know, party with. Not the like I used to. Millennials and all yeah. that good stuff. <laughs> Those days are gone, my friend. That, that's what Xfinity Live was supposed to be, and I don't think it ever quite was. Yeah, I. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It. It definitely doesn't. You know, jump out on the radar. Um. So. The park in itself. that sense, you know, you're right. Yeah. It's it's it does it does have some detractions, but. Uh, you're not searching for parking. You know where you're going to park. Um, it does well, have yeah, some... No, those giant lots, you may be searching for your car, though. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's it, that's kind of the one where one of the ones where you're like, okay, what 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 post? What's it, what does it say on the post? <laughs> 17. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, not as bad as Dodger Stadium. I would say Dodger Stadium, way worse for parking in that sense. Mm. We totally lost our car. And it wasn't even our car. It was a rental car, so that made it worse. Um but I think there's a, a ton going for it. I, I, I'm at the point now where I, I ask myself, what, what else could they do inside the ballpark to make it better? I'm at a loss. I don't know if there is anything they could do to make it better. I mean, it's an attractive ballpark. It's, it's straight. It's octagonal shaped. Yes. It's very kind of square and, yeah. and kind of sharp, which is okay. It's, it, all the angles are there to, to put you in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, they were one of the first places to have like the uh, like the certain section that was open an hour before everybody else, like the outfield, Ashburn's Alley. Oh, Ashburn Alley. Yeah, that is that's a something that I did not remember the last time I went and went this time, and we actually went in that entrance uh, right by there. So that would be the, uh, the outfield. left field entrance, yeah. and and I headed that way. And I was like, "Wow, this is this is pretty awesome." A lot of now, stuff out there. That being said, the the Phillies are really good now. So I found Ashburn Alley to be a little bit of a pain because I wanted to stop and look at stuff, and you know the thousand people behind me didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so you keep moving, uh, but they they do a lot of a lot of neat stuff. So, I mean, right off the top, you, you've got your, your set of bronze statues. Of course, in Ashburn Alley, you have a giant um, statue of Richie Ashburn, who the alley's named after. Uh, outside, you've got your uh, Steve Carlton and Mike Schmidt and Robin Roberts. And then just and outside. speaking of bronze statues, Robin Roberts is like a sepia colored. It's kind of a weird one, looking. isn't it? Yes. It's, it's a little strange. I, like, I have a, a, when you see the picture of it, you're like, is that really? Is that really a statue or is that like a cardboard cutout where they're going to put a statue one day? <laughs> I actually went in that entrance one time. I don't know how I ended okay. up on that side of the ballpark, but that must have been where I parked. Okay. And then there's a uh, one of Connie Mack that's just in the, uh, just on the outside, outskirts of the parking lot, just like across the road from the stadium. So you got that. If you walk inside in the left field, you're welcomed by two giant World Series trophies, one for each victory. Now think about this: the Phillies, eight, oh. established in eighteen eighty three, two World Series championships, and their first one was in nineteen eighty. That's crazy. 
Oh yeah, yeah. They are, they have not really set a high watermark, so that's why when they're they're good now, the, the Philly fans are really yes. Well, I don't want to say they're enjoying it, but man, is there a is there a fan base that is more miserable in their success than the Phillies? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's but, um, maybe it's like this is all we know. We only yeah, know maybe how it's to just our, Maybe it's our little silo. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we were, you were talking about the lack of success. The first time I went to Citizens Bank Park, and we didn't know this, we were on our first family vacation, Pam and I and all the kids tagging along four kids who were teenagers at the time miserable miserable trip we went to hershey park they were all miserable we went toward uh the battlefields get and gettysburg they were miserable on the way back pm and i said you know what we're gonna stop to see a baseball game the phillies are playing little did we know that at the time of our visit they had not the franchise had lost nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine games in their history so the day we showed up, they were about to lose their 10,000th game in their history. No team had ever done that before. So it was standing room only. <laughs> we didn't, and this was like 2005, 2006. So we weren't sophisticated enough to plan this all ahead. This was a spur of the moment thing. So we didn't have tickets. We walk up and, oh, we get standing room. Okay, we're here. We're going to get them. And so four teenagers. <laughs> miserable. Miserable. <laughs> Miserable. So we actually were there early enough where we found we were out in Ashburn Alley because there's standing room is kind of weird in Philly. It's not a lot of spaces for it. So, but we found a picnic table in Ashburn Alley, right under the clock. So it, okay. every time I look at a Philly game, I see that one picnic table under the clock. Hey, that's where we sat. Of course, Philadelphia won that game. So we oh. didn't even get we didn't even get to see that. The next day, they lost their ten thousand. <laughs> so that's um, awesome. a few years few years ago, uh, we were on another road trip. It was my birthday weekend. We stopped in Philly. It was 100 degrees, just Pam and myself. We had a much better time. But the park itself uh, is how, very yeah, How is it you like Philly here? <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you know, you come in that in that left field and you're talking about the the, the history. You know, go through the, go through the Hall of Fame. Because, you know, now every team has like their levels, right? You got your yeah. Hall of Fame, which is usually pretty big. They'll put in like two, three people per year. Yep. And then you've got your retired number of people and then your statues and whatnot. And hey, you could have a you could have a good time just going through the Hall of Fame names, right? And you and you've got your your moderns, your Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley and those guys who who maybe one day make it to the Hall of Fame or who knows. And then you've got guys from like, you know, the old Phillies, you know, your Gary Matthews and Bake McBride and you know, Elliot Maddox. Yeah, oh, you're just now. Maybe the kids aren't going to get it because they only know ten minutes worth of baseball. But for guys like you and I who've been baseball fans for a long time, it's it's always a blast. Hey, I remember that. I remember that guy. I hated I know, that guy. I know. I've sent you pictures <laughs> for these podcasts, and you're like, "What did you do? Just take pictures of everybody you recognize from the '70s?" I'm like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um. I think another thing that is probably understated at Philly. I mean, Philadelphia is a food mecca. If you if you go to Philadelphia and you don't go to Reading Terminal Market, oh yeah, you're wrong. That it's is the hit. that is the place to go. Uh, we'll even stop when we're driving oh, through Philly. That is um, amazing, and just be prepared because. If you are an indecisive person, give yourself a lot of time. Because <laughs> so, there are good things every oh other. Oh my gosh. If it's amazing. Stand. Amazing. Yeah. But that being said, I would have never said, you know, the the concessions at the ballpark are great. The concessions at the ballpark are great. Don't they have like four different cheesesteak yeah. vendors? Think about this. How different is that from how you would expect concessions to run. Well, we are the official cheesesteak right. of Citizens Bank Park. Uh-uh. Nope. You can get Tony Luke's and you can get Campos and there and there's all the uh, there were at least four that I saw, yeah. four different ones. That's a good thing. You've got your kind of celebrity barbecue, yep. you've got Bulls barbecue, Greg Lugzinski. That's a good thing. Uh you've got a bunch of other stuff the only bad thing I found about concessions 
lines. <laughs> they were popular. You know, there was there were lots of things well, to choose. Could be from. a factor. Could be a factor of not having a neighborhood. Could you be. You can't stop in the bar and have a sandwich before the game because there's yep. nowhere to stop and have a sandwich before the game. Definitely, definitely. So I was I was really pleasantly surprised with the concessions, and I I'm under the impression that they have improved over over time and they've gotten out of that you know we are the official french fry you know arrow mark like all that kind of all that kind of stuff you mentioned chicken and peeps earlier and you can get your chicken and peep fry, yep. garlic fries or crab fries or whatever crab they were fries yep yep with the cheese the cheese is what sells it for me yep uh when it comes to the the the, the game day atmosphere yeah you know, it's it's good you got the Philly fanatic that kind of just puts it up a little bit more, right? And it starts right off, comes out on his four wheeler, and he's buzzing through the outfield. Best mascot in the in the major leagues for your money? Um, I think so. I, I, if he's not at the top, he's in the top three, right? Yeah, definitely in the top in the top three. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think so. I think so. I, yeah, I, I would. It, it, I would have to be pushed and really think about it, but my first leaning would be, yeah, he's the best. Now, Tommy Lasorda didn't think so. But. <laughs> I, I, you know who else probably doesn't think so? The groundskeepers, because they got to be just like pulling their hair out. And you know, you think about how cranky groundskeepers are. If you've ever gone a ballpark, you know, tour, you know, right? and you can't step on the grass anymore, and he comes buzzing out in his four wheeler right across the lawn. I can see the 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 lot the groundskeepers just pulling their hair out. You know, it's funny. I've worked in and around sports for many many years, and yes, groundskeepers are the divas of the stadium world without a doubt. And and that's across the board. Any stadium you go to, it's tough to find. A jolly groundskeeper or an, easy, <laughs> an easygoing groundskeeper. I I would say, too, that, uh, and I think this is relatively new, that the Phillies probably have one of the best interactive areas in the majors. They have a spot. It's called the Yard. It's actually at the end of Ashburn Alley. They have, like, a climbing wall. They have, they have the most, the coolest little stickball stadium ever. It's got its own video board. <laughs> oh nice it, so you can so you can pimp out a home run and watch yourself on the video board absolutely absolutely nice. so that like that end is really really crowded you know what uh, you can do there that i haven't seen anywhere else if you're a pin collector they have a pin exchange area in the really? uh in the team shop the pro shop they got a pretty big pro shop there and so there's just this, this big bulletin board there and uh you know if you're a pin collector you can go check out and people leave a whole bunch of pins there See one you like, take one of yours, put it in, take that one, exchange that's, it. That's cool. I, I was there and I was like, oh, man, I wish I had some bids to exchange here. These are nice. Uh, of course, you got the you got the video boards and all the, the regular sort of stuff. Video board is definitely on the new side. It's it's crystal clear. If you get a, a shot, you know, of yourself on the video board, you could probably count your nose hairs. Um, but then you got that big, giant liberty bell that just that's that's kind of the thing right like you know you got a feeling like okay ballparks have their thing there's the green monster there's um there's the arch there's the river there's the twin sign there's and in philly it's it's the big liberty bell sign which i think rings on a home run it does in after victories because there yes, was no home runs when i went i can but tell I, you it does dave on victories on victories, it, it rings at the end. And, hey, we just saw it the other day when Nick Castellanos uh, sent those complaining Philly fans home happy. <laughs> or less and, angry. <laughs> do you know that's a new one that was put there for that ballpark? Because the one from the old veteran stadium is standing outside yes. of the ballpark at one of the entrances. Yes, it is out front. Which is kind of cool, too. And, and there isn't much... I, you know, it's funny. There isn't much love for any of the kind of donuts... Um, but I feel like if there's anyone that's mentioned more than others, it seems to be Veteran Stadium. Really? Yeah, I, I don't I've know. I've never why. heard anything good about it. Well, I'm not saying that it's good. You I just hear it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think Bush Stadium, I think, was more noteworthy, I think. But maybe not. I, I would say, too, that at the end, you know, 
it was great to go this year when the Phillies are really good. Um, my experience is that like Philadelphia does not have a fan base like like a like a, a Chicago Cubs fan base or a Boston fan base. No lovable um, losers in Philly, right? Well, yeah, no. The 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 fan base is a little bit more elastic. If the Phillies aren't good, then people aren't going to show up. Right? You know, you're going to get a, a twenty thousand. 30,000, sure, yeah. whatever. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a fantastic sports town. No like, doubt about that. It, in Chicago, for the Cubs, it's it's relatively sold out regardless. First place, last place, middle place. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. I, Boston's the same. Um, ish. For the Red Sox, yeah. For the Red Sox, yeah. Yeah, but but for the, for the Phillies, you know, if the Phillies aren't great, then there's going to be a lot of empty seats. So, yeah, I mean, uh, we talked about the neighborhood, talked about the food. It's yeah, I I when I'm putting my my list together and I did the same thing you did. The last time I came, you know, I'm doing my list in my head and it's like, wow, why did I have Philly down way so low? Just lumped in with all the other ret- retro classic. What do we what do we call the new ones there? Yeah, re- yeah. Yeah, retro whatever classic, retro modern. Yeah, cuz cuz it's really not that. It's kind of got its own look. So, um yeah, decent ballpark. Should get a little more love. So if you're in Philly, you should go check out a Phillies game. Definitely. And uh, after the yeah. Reading Market, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, major. Unfortunately, the Reading Market is not close, but no, still worth a look. So that's our look at Citizens Bank Park and the Phillies game day experience. Hope you enjoyed it, and we hope we see you again on the road real soon. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>